and poverty in Latin America. In the case of Central America, uh, we were in a very fast process that combined three main processes. The first one, we have a structural adjustment. The second, we have liberalization process. And the third, we have economic integration. Everything was done between 1990s, 1990 and 1994. All of them was uh, an agreement and it started to be implemented. So when we uh, start to discuss about the impact of, we always have very quite complicated issue because you say, is that an integration process? Is this is the effect of liberalization? <coughs> but what we really found is like by 2005, our GDP has been growing. The agricultural sector has been growing 5% very in average but the poverty and extreme poverty, they are also growing. So something was, was wrong. So uh, we decided to look the link between these, um, these two uh, issues, trade and poverty, uh, or growing poverty. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what is the effect of the globalization uh, in Central America. After we're going to talk a little bit about our results, and we're going to finish very fast with some key message that we have from these several studies. But what we are uh, seeing in, in that domestic market dynamic is like we have two types of integration. There are around 25%, 20 to 25% of producers they are getting into what we call the dynamic value chains, that dynamic with high quality and high prices. We are, that's what we are seeing. And these are the producers or the people that they are getting the benefit from the uh, market liberalization, market access, market integration. On the other hand, we are having these uh, green labels what we call the traditional value chains with low quality and low um, prices with several, now we are discussing if we have several intermediate prices, but they represent around 75 to 80% of produce. Uh, so what we are seeing is the agricultural sector, it, it has a dualism before in, in 1970, but the trade policy now is widening the gap between these two types of agriculture or these two types of <coughs> social sector. So <coughs> most of the time when we see that the project that we are doing in, in, in the field, we are focusing in this area. And this is more or less the medium and medium high income sector, ones that are benefit, benefiting for all our process. While this <coughs> is very complicated to be integrated in the in the in the dynamic value chains. I think. So <clears throat> what we found is like you cannot talk about everybody going to the market integration, to dynamic market integration. That depends on the type of product that you are working on. And just like a, like a general trend, what we found is like there are some domestic, uh, domestic products for self-consumption that they have no uh, intervention for any actor to, to any, for any mother or dynamic actor that make these value chains a high value, a high quality. Most of them, they are working by traditional market. And we have a lot of pressure because uh, rural development, uh, in 1960, we have uh, agricultural frontier. Today, we don't have agricultural frontier. So land is scarcity. We have a scarcity of land, <coughs> scarcity of water. And we need to produce more, and we need to produce with more quality. So we are going to have a very high pressure on agricultural or rural population. And what we found is in rural area, there is no permanent migration. We are finding that Central America still has a very high percentage of rural population. In the case of Nicaragua, it's around 44%. Salvador, 40%. Guatemala, 
and between 10 years, what we see is like they are mostly stable. They are not going to the urban area. So we don't, we don't have demographic transition from rural to urban area. We have a very potential uh, high problem in our next uh, year. Let me check the other. Oh, well, the, the, the last one that we have here is like, when uh, you uh, look for public intervention in vulnerable areas, when you talk about uh, the government trying addressing the issue of poverty, they tend to just have a food security program, like uh, food stamp. That's, that's the way that they are trying to address the issue. But mean that we are just putting a bend in the, in the hill, but we are not resolving the problem. What is the problem? The problem for integrating poor to, into the dynamic value chains has to be with quality standard, uh, mostly related to technology. They, have, they need to have logic change. Uh, we are talking about volumes through the year and quantity uh, in every month or every week. And we need a closer relationship with final consumers. These are the three uh, main issues that we have to address if we want to uh, incorporate uh, poor into the dynamic, dynamic value chains. What, he, what have we done right now? OK, you see, uh, our, we can say that most of our intervention goes to uh, facilitate uh, horizontal coordination. Uh, we have created, well, when I say we, I mean like development institutions have uh, promoted cooperatives, mostly cooperatives for horticulture, for coffee, for meal, for daily, uh, even for association as cooperative for uh, micro enterprise, uh, micro industry. Most of them are successful, but one of the questions that we are doing now is what is going to happen when they take out the money, the, the subsidies? Because all the training has been paid for uh, some international cooperation or for public funds. So we have low level of investment <coughs> over there. And vertical coordination, uh, the fair trade, inclusive business and agricultural contract has been uh, promoted, uh, mostly fair trade and organic uh, Fair trade has been one of the way that we, uh, is it common for coffee, mostly for coffee and cocoa, uh, but still there are heavy subsidies on that. Even the certification is paid by uh, international corporations. So there is, you're going to see that this is a big question for us. Second, uh, functional operating, so producer, this, this is going to address the issue of volumes, economy of scale. So they are not, they are now they have an organization, they are collecting all the product to sell in the same contract. But when we see um, most of the uh, infrastructure and, uh, and equipment has been uh, financed by cooperative public funds, the last study that we uh, did with Michigan State University uh, it's reflecting that cooperative day contribution is around 3 to 15 percent of total cost. So, on the other hand, we can say that cooperation of public fund share is around 85 to 97 percent. And when we see the high value transformation, it still is a large firm. We still have Nescafe. I mean, most of the coffee go to Nescafe or to the large firms of cocoa and, and milk, we still have permalet. So the high value transformation still is not in, in, in producer hands. Uh, basic, basic transformation, we have some basic transformation in, in producer hands. And produ products of grading, we have served successful in organic, gourmet, and fair trade products. The same, uh, even organic, um, Organic production, you know, uh, there are a lot of subsidies, and certification is also paid by uh, international cooperation. 
Now, this has been successful with exporting product. But when we talk about grains, about uh, the domestic product, we have very limited impact in this kind of uh, product. Kind of wrapping up, uh, we have several, we have tried several ways to improve market access. As I say, we are using the, the, the principle. Uh, however, uh, most of the <coughs> success that we have achieved is because there is more money from somewhere else. It's not private investment. And this is a very key issue for us. Even uh, there was some idea that we are creating new generation cooperative and I was the one who said, no, we are not, because uh, they are not investing in money for themselves. Uh, it's easy to create new generation cooperative when there is somebody who is paying everything. Sorry about that point of view, but I think that we, if we want to keep running after that we leave, they have to take uh, some calls, they have to you know, take responsibility investment. Otherwise, it's happened it might happen in several projects. After the donor is gone, the project is gone. Even the contracts are gone. Um, we can see that there is a very important uh, product in the domestic market. They represent 75 to 80% of the producer, but nobody's working on that. And with all the eye, we, we, we wrote a paper that's called the domestic bar market worthy. And we see now we have Walmart in, in Central America, and they are getting profit from domestic market. Mm -hmm. So that, that can show us that domestic market have some value. Uh, and we have uh, the danger of the risk that we are increasing inequities because we can be, we might be empowering and straining that organization which have export product that they represent around 25, 30% of population, while the other, the other 70, 75% of the population is still in traditional and low quality and low, in, low prices product. Thank you.